Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. This is the part 3 of Diabetes Mellitus series where we will learn about the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes mellitus. If you recollect in the earlier sessions, in the part 1 I had discussed about classification of diabetes mellitus and in the part 2 we discussed in detail about glucose homeostasis. So, in this session, let's learn about the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes mellitus in particular. We will see what are all the stages of type 1 diabetes mellitus and a bit about morphology of type 1 diabetes mellitus. So, we all know that the diabetes mellitus is classified as type 1 and type 2 broadly. Type 1 is an autoimmune disease where there is destruction of islets. Particularly, that's because of there is there are immune effector cells which are reacting against our own that is endogenous B cell antigens, right? And this autoimmune disease, as we all know, that's because of various genetic factors and environmental factors, which I'll be discussing in detail. Whereas type two diabetes mellitus is more complex disease. There is no evidence of autoimmune disease in this case. But still, there is interplay of genetic and environmental factors. And there is also a pro-inflammatory state in type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now, let's concentrate only on pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes mellitus in this section. Type 1 diabetes is the one which most commonly develops in childhood. It manifests at puberty and it progresses with age. Earlier, this was referred to as juvenile onset diabetes and also it was referred to as insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. But now it is shown that these two terminologies are incorrect because this can also occur in adults and this need not be insulin dependent always. So, these two terminologies are not used now. So, we know that the autoimmune disease basically is an imbalance between lymphocyte activation and the mechanisms of tolerance. The most important reason for autoimmunity is failure of mechanisms of tolerance. If you recollect my earlier sessions on autoimmunity, we have seen that the reasons why tolerance fail is because of various genetic factors and environmental triggers. So, we will discuss the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes mellitus in these two headings. What are all the genetic factors? And why do you say that genetic factors plays a major role in diabetes mellitus? That's because it is seen that there is higher concordance rates in monozygotic twins, twins as compared to that of dizygotic twins. So, the very fact that there is higher concordance in monozygotic twins suggests that there is a strong genetic association. And what are the genetic associations? It can be associated with HLA genes or non-HLA genes. Now, let's talk about HLA genes. So, there is a genetic locus that predisposes to type 1 diabetes mellitus and that genetic locus is present in the HLA gene cluster. Okay, And that contributes as much as 50% of genetic susceptibility for type 1 diabetes mellitus. So, what is that? If an individual he is HLA-DR3 or HLA-DR4 haplotype, then that individual has more propensity to development of diabetes mellitus, particularly type 1 diabetes mellitus. And if there is an individual who has HLA-DR3 or HLA-DR4, along with that, if he or she has HLA-DQ8 association, it says that this has the highest inherited risk for development of type 1 diabetes mellitus. And there is also increase in genetic diversity or variability in the HLA molecules. That is, polymorphisms in the HLA molecules is also associated with type 1 diabetes mellitus. So, this is about HLA genes. So, when you talk about non-HLA genes, there is variable number of tandem repeats in the promoter region of the insulin gene. So, remember, what are the non-HLA genes? It is the insulin gene. What happens in insulin gene? There is a tandem repeats which is variable where in the promoter region of the insulin gene. That is one of the important factor associated with development of type 1 diabetes mellitus. There can be polymorphisms in CTLA4 and PTPN22. 
or there can be mutations in the AIRE. We know that this is an autoimmune regulator gene. And this AIRE is, you know, we, these are the set of genes which code for immune regulators. Okay. So, whenever there is mutation in AIRE, it is seen that these individuals are associated with type 1 diabetes. Now that we have learnt about the genetic factors associated with type 1 diabetes, let's look into the environmental triggers which can result in diabetes mellitus. Even though we say that environmental triggers play a major role in pathogenesis, it still remains an enigma. Sometimes it is seen that the viral infections often they act as triggers for development of diabetes mellitus. And that's because the viruses might share epitopes with the pilot antigens. And that is what we know as molecular mimicry, right? And because it shares epitopes with islet antigens, that can result in triggering of autoantibody production. And autoantibodies are against the islets, right? These are islet autoantibodies. That's because the viruses might share epitopes with islet antigens, right? So, these are the environmental triggers which can be associated with type 1 diabetes mellitus. Now, let us see how the beta cell destruction happens. So, the fundamental defect in the destruction of beta cell is the failure to prevent reaction against self-antigens. Okay, that is a fundamental mechanism where there is failure of self-tolerance in T cells which are specific for islet antigens. So, what happens? There can be auto-reactive T cells and these auto-reactive T cells, they respond to the self-antigens. And what are the self-antigens in, in relation to type 1 diabetes mellitus? These are insulin, they can be beta cell enzyme, glutamic acid decarboxylase and there are various antigenic components. The most important ones are these two, insulin and the beta cell enzyme, glutamic acid decarboxylase. So, what really happens is that in initial phase of activation, the activation of these T cells, the self-reactive T cells occurs in the peripancreatic lymph nodes. Okay, And why does that occur in the peripancreatic lymph nodes? And that's because of response to antigens which are released from the damaged islet. And these islets are damaged due to some environmental triggers. Okay, In response to the antigens which are released, there is activation of the self-reactive T lymphocytes in the peripancreatic lymph nodes and now becomes activated T cells. And these activated T cells move into the pancreas. And now these activated T cells can be of E helper 1 cell type which can secrete cytokines like interferon gamma and tumor necrosis factor which causes beta cell injury. Okay, And the activated T cells can also be CD8 positive T cells which can directly damage beta cells. T helper 1 cells secrete cytokines and damage whereas CD8 positive cytotoxic T lymphocytes can directly cause damage to the beta cells. So, this is how beta cell injury takes place in type 1 diabetes mellitus. Now, once we understood the mechanism of beta cell destruction, we need to know the stages of type 1 diabetes mellitus. There are three distinct stages which are recognized and these are stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3. In all these stages, remember there is autoantibodies. It's a basic mechanism of type 1 diabetes mellitus, right? It's an autoimmune disease. So, you have autoantibodies. In stage 1, it is autoimmunity positive because there are autoantibodies. Sugar levels are normal. So, normal glucose levels. That's why it is normoglycemia and they are not symptomatic. So, this is pre-symptomatic type 1 diabetes mellitus. Only thing which is evident is that there is presence of islet autoantibodies. Whereas, stage 2, there is progressive loss of beta cell mass because of these antibodies. In this stage, there will be of course, autoimmunity positive, there will be dysglycemia, okay, impaired glucose tolerance. And of course, no symptoms. Only two things. One is autoimmunity positive and dysglycemia. Still, it is referred to as pre-symptomatic type 1 diabetes mellitus. There is only impairment of glucose tolerance. Whereas, stage 3, when there is more than 90% of the beta cells which are destroyed, then it is in stage 3. 
here you have autoimmunity positive you have dysglycemia and symptomatic type 1 diabetes mellitus and symptoms we know that it is polyuria polydipsia polyphagia and ketoacidosis i'll explain in detail about the mechanisms of these things when i talk about clinical features of diabetes mellitus okay as of now remember there are three distinct stages stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 and remember the transition from stage 2 to stage 3 can be abrupt and this abrupt transition can be brought about by superimposed stress particularly infections because in infections there is associated increase in insulin requirements okay so this is these are the three recognized stages in type 1 diabetes mellitus quickly let us see what happens in the pancreas what is the morphology of type 1 diabetes mellitus here there is reduction in the number and size of islets of lanterns right so the most of these islets are very small or they can be inconspicuous particularly when there is a rapidly advancing disease when the patient progresses from stage 2 to stage 3 due to some environmental triggers there can be very very uh, reduction in the size of the eyelids second important thing is that of course you have to demonstrate leukocytic infiltrate in the eyelids and that's called insulitis and the cells are predominantly of t lymphocytes right so what is the, what are the morphological findings one is reduction in the number and size of eyelids and two leukocytic infiltrate in the eyelids which is insulitis so with that i conclude the session on pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes mellitus we discussed various stages of type 1 diabetes mellitus and also a bit about morphology in type 1 diabetes mellitus before i conclude this session i would suggest you to navigate this amazing website ai study tool called visdolia.com where you can solve multiple choice questions clinical scenario based questions the best part is that you can you do get instant feedback and it is really fun to learn this way in the next session i will be discussing in detail about the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes mellitus and we will see the various clinical features associated with diabetes mellitus Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries to ask. Do comment if you have any suggestions also. Consider subscribing if you find this channel useful. And please don't forget to share among your friends. Thank you.